Welcome back to the show, everybody, and today I'm going to show you that I have no idea what I'm doing. A big part of learning how to paint miniatures is experimenting, trying new techniques, trying new color combinations, which is something I do quite a lot. And for our Hobgoblin miniature here, I'm going to show you just that process. So enough of the jibba jabba, let's get to painting, and we are going to start off with our Hobgoblin skin. Now Hobgoblins are supposed to have an orange or orange reddish skin tone. I'm going to go a little bit more towards the orange side. Now for our skin, I'm going with a orange brown tone. We are starting off with charred brown, that's going to be our shade color. Our base coat color is going to be parasite brown, and our highlight color, scrofulous brown. Now, at this moment, I do not know if this color combination will get me the results that I already have in my head. I do know that all these colors have a bit of an orange tone and a little bit of a brown tone, so they should work well together, but I don't know that for sure. This is all experimentation. Now, I have probably used these three colors together before. I can't remember for sure, but through experience, I, I do know that the colors should work well together. If they work for a hobgoblin skin tone, that's something I really don't know. However, as always, we are going to go from darkest to lightest, starting off with our shade color. You can see we're working on the left side of our palette, so we have a mix of our charred brown and parasite brown. Paint is applied fairly thick here. We don't need to thin it super thin just yet. Moving a little bit further along our color path that we have on our palette here, we're working in a little bit more of our parasite brown color and beginning to put on our secondary highlights. Once again, this color is not super duper thin with water because we just want to leave the dark first shade in the deepest recesses. We are up to our base coat now. Now we have to have the paint a little bit on the thinner side and slowly build up our layers via layering. And again, good representation of our colors on our palette. We're at about the middle area of the color schmear that we have on the palette. I don't always mix colors this way. Uh, I do it on occasion. I do find it very useful so you can adjust easily if you have too much shade or too much highlight. You can just go back a little bit or move forward a little bit as needed. And just in case you're curious, this step took about five and a half minutes or so. You can see how we built up the color. And this is going to be the longest step because obviously the base coat covers the largest surface area of the model. As we start moving into the highlights, the painting will get quicker. Moving forward on to our first highlight, we are starting to work in some of that scrofulous brown color and working on a smaller area, start concentrating on those highlights, areas where uh, the sun is more likely to be caught, so upper portions of the muscles, the face. Uh, good idea is to, if you start looking straight down at the model and start concentrating on those areas that you can only see while looking straight down. Moving forward, more of our scrofulous brown being added, and I can see right now I'm going to have a little bit of a problem that I'll have to take care of in a step or two. Now, going back to our color experimentation process here and learning as we go, I could have used a, a wide variety of different colors here instead of the three that I picked. I could have gone with something a little bit more brown, like a orange brown for our base coat and something a little bit more yellow for our highlights. Lots of different things that I could have tried, but my main goal here is orange skin. So I wanted to keep to uh, the, the orange color and not introduce yellow or too bright of a color and take it in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. 
So now you can see that we are at the far end of our palette. I'm pretty much using straight scrupulous brown here. And I have a little bit of a problem now. Uh, because the scrupulous brown is not a very light color, it's not white or anything closely related to that, uh, I'm not getting enough highlights here. So our skin is looking a little bit flat. So I'm gonna have to introduce another color, a lighter color here, and we're gonna start mixing in some e.l.f. skin tone. Now at the beginning when picking my three colors, this is not something I was planning on doing. I have to adjust my color combinations based on the situation that we are currently in. Now, the professional video painter maker would probably omit this step and tell you that, no, I had this planned all along, but I want to be honest with you here and show you that even my amateur professionalism, I don't get everything right here. So I need to adjust our colors on the fly with the addition of our e.l.f. skin tone. And even when I plan something out, it doesn't always work. So if you're trying something that's not working, don't worry, it happens to all of us. Just try something else or adjust whatever you're doing. It's always fun to add a little bit of color variation, especially when you are doing skin. Uh, in this case, for the ears, for example, I want the ears to be a little bit more kind of raw looking. And using a little bit of Leho model color, beige red is glazed in there, so they look just a little bit more pink. So our skin is pretty much done here. However, after comparing it to photos online, I didn't have one as a reference while painting it, I realized that while hobgoblins can be a bit more uh, on the orange range, a lot of them do tend to be more red. So. Rather than repainting everything, I'm just going to fix what I just painted. Using glazes is a great way to tweak your work. If it doesn't come out perfect, a glaze can be used to smooth out brush strokes or tint your results in a certain direction. And in this case, I'm using some Panzer Aces Shadows Flesh to just add a little bit of a red tone to our skin. Now we don't want to overdo this, we want to keep it to one or two very, very thin layers and just add a little bit of a red hue. If we do too much, we're going to lose all that work we just did on the skin and we could risk covering up all of our contrast, all our highlights and uh, bringing up our shade colors as well. Now, I, much like you, have a few go-to colors when it comes to painting certain things. In this case, for leather and wood, my go-to combination is model color flat earth, then highlighted with game color leather brown, and then game color plague brown. It's a very good combination that I've been using for years, but even with uh, a reliable mixture like that, we still want to adjust it uh, now and then just to try new things. In this example here, we have a, a very uh, deep gouged wood shield, and so I need a wash here. So starting off with our flat earth and then giving it a heavy wash of charred brown mixed with black, and then I'm gonna go pick out the wood grain, once again returning to our flat earth. So it's a little bit of different color combination that I'm using here. I often do use camo black brown to shade our flat earth, uh, but in this case, because we have this rough surface, it really needs a wash to get into all those little nooks and crannies. For our next color, I'm sticking with my tried and true recipe using game color leather brown, and in this case, trying to highlight all that wood grain, so we're working on the upper portions, trying not to get the color into the recesses that we washed. If that happens, we can just do a uh, reapply a spot wash using black or a very dark color to pick those out. And then for our final highlight, rather than going with plague brown, I'm actually mixing in some beige to our leather brown. Now, the exact reason I did this at the time, I couldn't tell you. Uh, may have been already on my palette, or I think I may have not wanted to get uh, too close in the yellow range. I wanted it a little bit further away from the skin tone. 
Who knows, but even tried and true recipes we can adjust as needed. A while back I showed you a technique of using metallics and non-metallic paint to get a really nice effect when painting armor and weapons, and that was the true metal non-metallic technique. Now that specific color combination of gunmetal or steel with a mix of stormy blue and scurvy green and black added for shade took years to figure out that specific color combination that really worked. However, even though it took me a lot of failures and a lot of experimentation to come up with that color combination, that does not mean I want to stop there. I still want to continue to play with it and experiment with it because I may find a better color combination. In this case, I wanted to see what happens if I rely more heavily on our scurvy green color in our initial mixture rather than the stormy blue. And then for the shadows, we are gonna go with just stormy blue and black, mainly because I thought the scurvy green was looking a little bit too green. If you are not familiar with the TMN technique, I suggest you go watch the full video, but just to recap here real quick, the idea is to use regular paint and metallic paint together. So we have the metallic sheen on our highlights, but as we go into the recesses, we rely more on our non-metallic paint to give uh, the impression of shadow and dullness to those areas where the sun would not reflect off the armor. As we work on to our highlights, I am mixing in some steel. So this is brightening up the armor for our highlights. And again, even with this technique, I did a full video on this showing you all the colors I used. I am still tweaking things here. I used gunmetal. I believe I used steel in the original video, but now I'm switching it up and adding steel to our highlights uh, twice. And just to show you again, even things that I've published, I'm still working on experimenting, trying to find better ways to use them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we are always trying something new. Now in this particular case, I uh, realized that relying more on the scurvy green didn't work out too well because I still had the stormy blue in it. So even though I wanted something that's uh, more on the green side than what I did in that original video, it looks pretty much the same as I did in that video. So lesson learned. If I'm gonna have more green armor, I have to use a completely different shade of green. I'll try to remember that for next time that I'm experimenting with this color combination. If you're looking to try something new, something else you can do is use the same colors you always use for painting a certain color, but mix up the way you apply them. My standard go-to recipe for painting red is model color hull red, game color gory red, and then model color vermilion for the final highlights. However, what I decided to try here on the fly is burnt red and vermilion as my undercoat and then for my shade, I'm actually using a heavy wash, a mix of hull red and black. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you that often in the past, I've said you do not want to use black to shade red because it gets too dark. Uh, you wanna go for a dark brown or a dark red, or even you can mix in a little bit of purples. But even what I say is not law and I break the rules that I put out and I suggest you do them as well. Just because one semi-professional painter tells you not to do something doesn't mean you shouldn't at least try it. And in this case, using it as a heavy stain and then going back over with our whole red, gory red mix, it got me a very dark red color, which is what I was looking for for this particular figure. I didn't want to go too far into the browns. I didn't want to add purple. I just want a kind of a muddy red color. And then instead of adding vermilion for the highlights, I decided to go with Scarlet, which has a little bit more of an orange tint 
to it just to mix things up slightly so we kind of have the same mixture that I always use here however I kind of switched around the application process and also switched out our highlight color final thing to paint is his furry mantle around the cloak and for this I'm going rather traditional I don't have anything new I'm really experimenting with here uh, just want to mention it so we can finish off the video with me showing you everything that I possibly can starting off with a base coat of flat earth I'm leaving some of the black primer in the recesses and then I'm hitting it with a heavy paint stain wash a mix of camo black brown and black from here we are going to reapply our base coat of flat earth and remember this is so far the same color combination that I used on the shield. I would generally recommend you use different colors for different surface types on a miniature so Normally, you don't want to use flat earth on both wood and fur, especially if you're using the same shade. However, we still can make it look different by changing up the highlight colors. So rather than going with leather brown and then beige added for our highlights, I'm instead using straight heavy brown here and then I'm going to add beige to this. So even though we have the same shade, actually it's applied a little bit heavier here, and the same base coat color, because I'm switching out this one color here, heavy brown instead of leather brown, we're going to get a completely different tone from the wood on the shield. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that if you do have a, a really nice color combination that works for you, uh, you can still switch out one of the colors to try something new. Everything you try doesn't have to be trying three colors you never used before. If you find a good recipe, just switch out one of the colors one at a time and see what results you'll get. And then after applying our flat varnish, we have our finished Hobgoblin, who admittedly looks a little bit more gob than hob. I hope this crushes any myth that I know exactly what I'm doing at all times and I know everything will work. I wish it did, doesn't really work that way. I, much like most any brand new painter, am always trying new things, experimenting, and trying to see just what works. Now, of course, I do have a benefit that I've been painting so long. I have a general idea what will work and what won't work but I still try things that I'm pretty sure won't work because there might be a way to make it work and I just haven't tried that way yet that's how I discovered paint staining that's how I discovered the TMNT technique that's how I discovered a lot of things so always be experimenting with your painting you can listen to channels like me or other channels and take their advice but don't take it to heart do the opposite of what I tell you sometimes. You may learn something new or you may learn why I do it in that particular way. But most important thing, whatever way you do it, you're going to be learning something. So that is it for now. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hobgoblins, hobgoblins. What do you do with those hobgoblins? They're over here, they're over there.